phase diagrams. Phase diagrams uh, show the state, the physical state, gas, solid, liquid, also known as the phase of a substance as a function of pressure on the y-axis and temperature on the x-axis. And there are different regions in the phase diagram. These represent areas where, or conditions where that state is stable. The lines, oftentimes they're curves, represent um, the set of temperatures and pressures where the substance is in equilibrium between those two states. Um, these uh, different lines are called the vaporization curve, where you have an equilibrium between uh, the liquid and the vapor, or the gas. Um, a sublimation curve, equilibrium between gas and solid, and fusion curve between solid and liquid. And these often um, meet at what's called the triple point. And that's a unique set of conditions where you can have an equilibrium between all three states at the same time. So here's a phase diagram for water. So here's our pressure, and this is not to scale, but here's 760 torr, so that's atmospheric pressure. Here is, we have temperature, also not to scale, uh, 0 degrees Celsius and 100 degrees Celsius. So what we can notice here is that at atmospheric pressure and 0 degrees Celsius, um, that point is on the fusion curve line. This is the equilibrium between solid and liquid. And at 100 degrees Celsius in one atmosphere, that's the boiling point of water, we have the liquid and the gas in equilibrium with each other. This is the triple point. So it's at a low pressure, a pressure lower than atmospheric pressure and somewhat above the freezing point. You can have um, gas, liquid, and solid water all in equilibrium with each other. Well, like between the, the solid and the liquid, e equilibrium on this fusion curve is where you, depending on whether you're getting colder or warmer, you either have ice melting or you have water freezing. So, you know, I have some lemonade here, and there's ice and water in it. They are in equilibrium. The temperature in there is zero degrees Celsius. Okay, and then it would be liquid. Okay. This this freezing point, the temperature at which the water freezes, though, varies a little bit with the pressure. So this is not, this fusion curve is not a perfect vertical line. At higher pressures, it, um, it melts at a lower temperature. And so that's why ice skates work. Because when you put pressure, you know, 150 pound person on the blades of an ice skate, right? That's putting a significant amount of pressure on the ice it causes the ice to melt slightly and that makes the ice very slippery and so the ice skate will glide. Um, we see that the, um, the boiling point here, um, as pressure increases, the boiling point increases. As pressure decreases, the boiling point decreases. And this is a sublimation curve. And you see at zero degrees Celsius and one atmosphere, um, well, things are going to melt, but if we get down here, we can get sublimation, and the sublimation um, will also depend on the pressure. If we get above this point, this line, this vaporization curve, ends, and that's called the critical point, because beyond that, at temperatures higher and pressures higher than that, we don't have two states. We have a supercritical fluid. Any questions? We're not going to ask you to draw phase diagrams, but you should be able to what's called navigate within a phase diagram. So we can represent changes or tem in temperature or changes in pressure um, as movement within the diagram. So here on line A, we're, we're keeping at one atmosphere of pressure and we're increasing the temperature. And so what we see as we travel across this line, we start with solid and it melts here, and we could draw, drop a line down here and, and measure what the melting point was, what the temperature was, 
And as the temperature increases, it's a liquid. The liquid warms up, and at this point, it vaporizes. And so you could drop a line down there and say, OK, that's boiling at 100 degrees Celsius. And beyond that, you're going to have a gas. You can also look at what happens to it with a change in pressure. And so if you start here at one atmosphere and room temperature, and you decrease the pressure, and you decrease the pressure, and you decrease the pressure, you get to a point where you have equilibrium between liquid and gas at room temperature. It's a low pressure. Down here we have minus point zero, and it's not minus, 0 0.006 atmospheres. And this is not to scale, so we can't just, you know, read it off here. But down at low pressure, the water will boil at room temperature. As we, as we increase the pressure, the boiling point of the water increases. So, you know, as we're traveling up this line, as we're increasing the pressure, the boiling point increases. And so at a higher pressure, it boils at a higher temperature. Any questions? Yeah. Um, I, I remember seeing this on the ACS for, uh, for Gen 3 mm -hmm. a long time ago. And I remember, do they usually label those? When, when they usually like graphs? They're usually not going to label them. Yeah, they'll, they'll probably label this as pressure and temperature, but then they'll just be these, these funky lines. And so you should know that the solid, the liquid, and the gas. So at higher temperatures, you know, whichever one is more at the high temperature, that's going to be the gas. And different substances have very different looking phase diagrams. So here we've got iodine and carbon dioxide. Um, and so the, the slopes of these lines and where they are relative to the markings on the pressure and temperature scales are very different. If we look, if we go back real quick to water, water's um, fusion curve has a negative slope. It, it, as you go up, it gets more negative. Um, when we look at iodine and carbon dioxide, their fusion curves have positive slope. That's more normal. For water, that negative slope is atypical. That's not common for, for compounds. So for iodine, again, we see, you know, at, we can go at 184 degrees, and it'll be a gas at low pressure. And as we get up to one atmosphere, that's the boiling point of iodine. If we increase the pressure, it will become a liquid. And if we increase the pressure further, we can cause it to become a solid. That doesn't happen with water. You put more pressure on it, and it's going to melt. Um, for carbon dioxide, what's really interesting is that there's no stable liquid state at one atmosphere. You can't get liquid carbon dioxide at one atmosphere. So here we have one atmosphere. And as you increase the temperature, it goes directly from solid to gas. We have sublimation, and there's no liquid. You can't get liquid carbon dioxide until you're up uh, to at least 5.1 atmospheres of pressure, and that's a lot of pressure. <laughs>